Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. In this video, I want us to have a look at a tweet. A tweet by Professor Mutai Ngunyi about William Ruto's Kamkunji rally yesterday. For this tweet, exposes very interesting political dynamics about the state of William Ruto's politics and likely the state of Kenya Kwanza politics two months to the elections. But before we do that, let's just remind ourselves of what happened yesterday during William Ruto's Kamkunji rally. Yesterday, upon IEBC clearing William Ruto as a presidential candidate, Ruto took his campaigns to Kamkunji grounds in Nairobi. And from the photos and even the videos we saw, the rally was not all that much attended as maybe William Ruto and his foot soldiers maybe wanted. It was not all that attended. And I'm saying that because William Ruto and his team, they put a lot of capital on rally attendance. And we have been seeing them really hyping their rallies as being well attended. And at some point, Dennis Itombi has also been exposed for actually photoshopping photos and then creating a perception that William Ruto's rallies are always being attended well. But yesterday from what we saw in Kamkunji, the rally was not all that attended. So in this video, I want us to have a look at Professor Mutai Nguni Street, after which we are just going to dissect it, for you to see clearly why William Ruto's rallies are no longer exciting Kenyans as they used to do some months back. Let's have a look at the Professor Street. Mutai Nguni. After Kamkunji failure on Sunday, I think he meant Saturday, Ruto has become a slow punctured candidate. No energy, no electricity. He began too early. That's the professor's tweet. And that tweet has actually been generating a lot of heated political debate online. Mutai alleges that because William Ruto started his campaigns way too early, he has actually lost energy, and maybe Kenyans are now not interested in his rallies, because all along he has just been saying the same, same things. That's what I'm seeing Mutai Nguni trying to say here. So in this video, I want us to dig deep, for you to see clearly what is ailing William Ruto only two months to the election. In case you've bumped here for the very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Yes. One of the things clearly ailing William Ruto is that William Ruto lacks a consistent narrative he can maintain consistently without himself abusing that narrative. What am I trying to say? William Ruto immediately fell out with Uhuru Kenyatta. He started hustlers versus dynasties. In that he was saying some hustlers or rather some dynasties had ganged against hustlers. Some dynasties had ganged against him. So the suffering hustlers were facing was as a result of some dynasties ganging up against them. That was the narrative William Ruto started some times back, and it was resonating well with the poor masses on the ground. But the same same William Ruto abused that narrative himself by going to bed with some of the people he was actually accusing as being dynasties. One being Musalia Mudavadi. So that technically kills that kind of a narrative. And that only means that William Ruto supporters are now left confused. They don't know whether to believe William Ruto or not to believe him. The same people was accusing 
as bring, bringing upon poverty on the masses, he's actually in bed with them again. That's one reason why I strongly believe that now only two months to the elections, William Ruto is coming out tired and almost defeated. He has, he has no rallying call that his sup supporters can actually identify him with. And let me also give an example of Raila Mulodinga. Raila will go down in history as a leader who was able to maintain a rallying call from maybe one election to the other without abusing that call. In 2007, Raila identified the Katiba constitution and he rallied his supporters very effectively around that. And by the time the government woke up, it was almost an election time. So he had actually been hyping and psyching his supporters using that, and he did that consistently till the election time. After 2007 election, as we were heading to, towards 2012 election, he also used the constitution issue. And these are things that are practical. Kenyans were, were yearning for, for change, for a constitutional change. So Raila identifies something that is resonating very well with the people, then he maintains that kind of a narrative till to, to the end. He does not make maybe a bow turn on that issue. He maintains it. Look at now as we were heading towards 2017 elections again, the Okwa Kenya. Raila was just rallying his supporters around that, and that could make his supporters stick around him. And then immediately after 2017 presidential elections, that Raila actually skipped. Raila started again that there will be no election, or rather there will be elections in August, in August of 2018. For those who are very keenly following politics, I still remember immediately after 2017 elections in 2018, Raila had started an, a clever narrative that because elections were not free and fair, Kenya must have elections in August, in August of 2018. And had it not been, been for the handshake, Raila could have pushed that kind of an idea. Even if it could have actually backfired, Raila could have used it to actually rally supporters around a common goal. That is something lacking with William Ruto. William Ruto is just talking, empty talks. He has no rallying call that can rally supporters around a common cause. That's why he's appearing tired and defeated. The second thing that might be ailing Ruto again, a majority of William Ruto's narratives are just lies and propaganda. Kenyans have just realized William Ruto is actually lying to them. He is not being truthful with them. And just as the, that, from even that first example I've given, the hustlers versus dynasties, that's just a lie. Kenyans have come to realize William Ruto is lying to them. William Ruto gave so many promises in 2013 and 2017, he never fulfilled them. And ironically enough, or sarcastically enough, he's still giving such kind of similar promises in 2022. So Kenyans are just realizing this man is actually a liar. The issue of bottom-ups. William Ruto himself is on record stating he's going to form a government of Mamamboga, border border. But the people we are seeing William Ruto nominating, maybe to contest a governor, senator, women representative, MCA, these are not hustlers. These are very wealthy people. The likes of Mudavadi Wetangula, these are not hustlers. These are wealthy people. So William Ruto is actually coming out as a liar. He's just using clever words or other political gimmicks to hoodwink unsuspecting Kenyans. And another good example, William Ruto sometimes back was going around the country giving some kind of handouts. And William Ruto could go to a rally, maybe in McQueen, Mombasa, or in Western. Then he says on the podium, 
that nimewaachia milioni moja hapa then upon leaving that area maybe a week later or some days later you see demonstrations in those places people demonstrating that the money william ruto promised they have not given they, have, they never got that money so that also exposed ruto as just lying or rather he was using poor masses for his own political mileage and also there was also an instance in sotik constituency where there was a arambe down there for boda boda operators and money maybe was raised william ruto said that he had given the money to the area member of parliament later the area member of parliament actually made it very clear that william ruto demanded back the money that also just exposed ruto as a liar so a majority of william ruto's words and even narratives they are just lies their william ruto is not being truthful so i tend to believe kenyans have also just realized that that's why they are avoiding and they are no longer excited about william ruto's rallies he is a liar and then finally william ruto is also just facing the reality of kenyan politics in kenya it's all about ethnic voting people vote according to ethnic lines or party lines all along those who had been supporting william ruto they were supporting william ruto because there was no serious election to be undertaken but now just two months to the real elections kenyans are waking up to that reality that there is an election to be undertaken they are now just retreating back to their ethnic cocoons and to their parties and as they do that william ruto is being left isolated with his kalenjin ethnic community only following him that's why again william ruto is coming out as defeated and tired and just as also mutai nguni stated William Ruto started his campaigns way too early and the narrative is the same the same same narrative he was saying in 2018 is the same same narrative William Ruto is saying today Kenyans have gotten bored to that William Ruto should change his narrative in 2018 he was saying some people are in a corner hmm, planning <laughs> planning against me I'm surprised to hear William Ruto yesterday saying the same same ones. So William Ruto is also not strategic. Mm? He he keeps repeating the same same narrative since 2018. He has to be strategic, he has to be smart politically. I believe those are the factors or reasons why William Ruto is coming out as tired, beaten and almost a man who is almost giving up yes and it's true that in this year's election he's losing it yes he's losing it <laughs> so maybe that's also adding him maybe some kind of pressure and some stress but that's the reality of kenyan politics thank you god bless you god bless kenya